It's the second day of the five-day warning strike called by organized labor to protest against the mass <coughs> sacking of workers by the Kaduna state government. The state was grounded yesterday as the strike began, but Governor Nasu Erufai said the government would neither retreat nor concede to any thoughtless and corrupt political hack. The striking workers are set to go out on the streets again today. But before they do, let's talk to the vice chairman of the Nigeria Labour Congress in Kaduna State, uh, Mr. Ephraim Jonah. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, we also have with us uh, a barrister, Francis Danadikoza. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. So, um, Mr. Jonah, let's begin Good with morning. you. Yes. So, the NLC basically is protesting in Kaduna State over, you know, some workers that were disengaged from service. But what we're hearing from the Kaduna State Governor, Nasu El Rufai, is that some of them failed competency tests, some of them didn't have the requirements, and he also mentioned that they had to be laid off or were right-sized because the payment of salaries you know, of workers in Kaduna State was taking over 80% of the revenue you know, in Kaduna. What do you think about these you know, reasons? Are they justifiable? Well, um, <clears throat> Uh, there are two things you brought up now. You are talking about people didn't pass competency tests. I are also talking about uh, the wage bills of the Kaduna State government. These are two issues. But I know for one that all these issues that uh, are being brought up now, they are they were they were just flimsy excuses. Uh, when everybody came on board. As a governor of Kaduna State, he has shown himself to be anti labor. And his uh, uh, president will tell you that even when he was uh, in Abuja and uh, even when he was in the, uh, 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 which, uh, you, 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 could, you could see what he did. So it is not that the uh, that, uh, wage bill, and it's not about, uh, in fact, there was a time he even said that. Uh, Salary is not what he came to do, and that uh, he can't be using the money to repay salary. But the question we kept asking him is, who generates this? Uh, who generates uh, this money that you are you are you are you are you are, you are fisting on it? And uh, we talk about qualification and we talk about test. Somebody who has worked for 30 years, for 25 years, and you are now bringing about uh, competency, you are now bringing about test. I can't understand. So. These are all things we excuses to bringing up on board, but we remain resolute. And uh, in fact, in most cases, we are not even saying that he should not. But the, 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 the rule of the law must come to play. There are, there are conditions of engagement. If you are engaging me, there are things we we'll agree upon. You give me your conditions, I give you my conditions. And if at any time you feel you don't need my services, you, we follow the, 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 the conditional service that uh, we, we, sign it, uh, we sign it at the beginning. Okay. So whatever right. you say, these are flipped excuses. Okay, um, I, I want to bring in uh, Barrister Francis Danladi uh, Koza um, with the uh, perspective where he says that uh, the amount of money used for paying salaries every month is way more than 70%. Um, do you think that's a good enough reason to want to downsize the workforce in Kaduna State um, and focus strictly on those people who, you know, are entirely beneficial to the state and to the state's economy? Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, as an employer, the ability to pay your employee is very paramount, even in private sector. There are times that uh, when situations are difficult, that uh, workers are unfortunately let off. Not to talk about government and other agencies. So the ability to pay, the ability to pay is very, very important. It's very paramount to every employee and employer. Now, if uh, the government is saying that we cannot be able to pay, of course, would you expect them to keep uh, keeping people without payment? That is an issue. 
And then the second issue we, we want to address is that, uh, uh, yes, uh, every employer has a right to employ, to engage, and to disengage. There's no doubt about it. The law is very clear on those issues. Uh, you can engage and disengage. Yes, you engage based on the condition of service. And everybody that has been engaged or they have been disengaged and feels that it is unjust has the courts to, to, to challenge the disengagement. If, if it is illegal, if it is not well grounded, no. So the courts are there that everybody who feel aggrieved can vindicate his grievances in the court of law. Now, this right thing is old fashioned. Old fashioned in the sense that, look, you are punishing people who ordinarily are not involved in your crisis government. Look at the poor masses, those who go about their daily work. They have been punished unnecessarily. You have, you have, you have, you have a lot of electricity. A lot of people depend on electricity for their business, and you've cut them off. They have no say in the circle of workers, and they are suffering. You went and closed and, and shut up hospitals where the poor goes to attend to, to get to their medical attention. You close those hospitals, and the poor are lavishing in pains and anger. They have been punished. So it's a question of democracies, differences with government is being vetted on the poor masses. And I think that is an issue. That issue that else you should look at. If you have any grievances, then deal with the person or the, the authorities that have the grievances. So you don't, you said, don't agree with the so you don't agree with the NLC's approach. So so what you're saying is that you don't agree with the approach of because go ahead, please. Yes, it's out fashioned. The NLC approach is out fashioned. You can't just punish somebody who is not party to a dispute. That's the truth about it. And that is what the NSC is doing here. And today, of course, in Kaduna yesterday, a lot of workers who go back to their went back to work in their offices. I'm telling you, they went to the offices and they just, just went to work. So they are in, on their beds, on their desks now, doing their work. The, 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 the executive council of the state held yesterday successfully and nobody stopped it. So it held yesterday. So the ordinary people are being made to suffer unnecessarily. And I feel NLC should take to, to the issues and so I mean, dialogue is very important in every dispute resolution. Dialogue is very important. Okay. Whether you like it or not, you stop. Now, All if right. you are saying that you have sacked uh, uh, thousands of workers, you must agree on the FIGO. Government is saying nobody has agreed on the FIGO. NLC is claiming the government claiming the FIGO. You are saying they have not been paid. Government is saying they have been paid. Others are saying they have not been paid. So what is it? These issues can only resolve through dialogue. All not right. Um, um, all right. Hold on, Mr. Bar uh, Barrister Francis. Mr. Ephraim Jonah, I want to bring you in here. Can you hear me? All right. So uh, the barrister here I'm is here saying here. that the, the method, you know, through which NLC is trying to get the government to do what they want is old-fashioned. And that you can either seek recourse through, you know, the court of law or dialogue with the government. Are these options you might want to consider rather than protesting on the streets? Well, the barrister is talking as a legal person. And uh, uh, you see, when we, he has mentioned a point that is very clear. The employer has the right to fire and to hire. No doubt about it. But that the condition at which you started your engagement must be obeyed. And uh, you are talking about going to court. Which court? How many, how many judgments have been passed in Kaduna State that have not been respected? And you are talking about court. Who respects court in Kaduna State? And uh, when we talk that people are so, uh, we have uh, subjected people uh, to hardship and uh, so on. Uh, the people are already dying. People are dying because of the policies of the government. So it's not about suffering. People have suffered and they are still suffering. Hmm. You, you, okay, people that you say they live daily on the, uh, they, they live on, on, the, on, the, on daily wages or whatever transaction they make. The issue is this in Kaduna State. There is nowhere you can see people sell and buy along the road. You cannot see it. He has destroyed all the business, the people that he sat. He didn't pay them. And uh, he, the facts are there. It's not that we are, we are forging, we are, we are, we are civil. 
and we know what we we talk so with Mr. Mr. Jonah, we are not just Mr. talking any, anyhow. Mr. Jonah, if you're if you saying, saying that, saying, Mr. Jonah, Mr. Jonah, um, uh, yes, I can hear you. Uh, excuse me. If you're saying that you don't have faith in the judicial system in Kaduna State, because that will yield no fruit. How about the second option, the barrister suggested dialogue, you know, speaking with the government, you know, to try to solve this, you know, amicably? No, let me tell you one thing. Erufai has been so arrogant. He doesn't sit with the union. He has never, in, since he came on board, this is the fifth year, I suppose, that he came on board. He has never, we have written him letter. At the time he was elected, we sent him a congratulatory message. He never responded. No letter has been followed by this government. And uh, at times, if issues come up, is the head of service, I will just call people and uh, just give them instruction and give them information. And everybody goes. And then when the union, when the union says no, we need to talk. They have never uh, respected the union in any little way in Kaduna. And you, all of us, we are, you know, you know how, the, how the, this man we are dealing with is. He feels that he's on top of, he does, nobody knows anything like him. He feels he's the expert in every field. So he does anything he likes to do. And in Nigeria, what the, the last option is to, is to do what we are doing. That's the last option. We have, yesterday, the commissioner of police called us. He called us, and we are together with him. And he showed his, uh, you know, his, uh, his, uh, uh, he was not comfortable if we go on protest. We told him, well, the, the issue is that, that he was going to organize government to sit down with labor and discuss. But I'm telling you, as I'm talking to you, nothing has been heard from government, only for them to be issuing trade and intimidation. And it's not fair. And that's why we are doing this. If there are people who can talk to you, as the governor of Kaduna State, they should call him to order. This thing that we are doing, you know, sometimes you must suffer before you enjoy it. So we are appealing to even the citizens of Kaduna to be patient with us, that at the end of this, they are going to get whatever they're entitled to. All right. So I want to bring back Barrister Francis. Um, uh, with regard to your point on uh, going to court. Um, Thank you very much. I have... Yeah, I, I, want, I want you to you know, speak once again on your, your, the point you made with regards to going to court instead of uh, going on strike. Do you um, think that maybe yes, uh, yep. Jusun workers also shouldn't be on strike and they should have approached the court instead? The point I'm making is this. If any, any dispute between two principal agencies, NLC, government, anybody, everybody has recourse to law. And went to the courts to vindicate his crisis there. Look, I, it's unfortunate that somebody will tell me that he does not respect the courts, the judiciary. The judiciary is the last hope of the ordinary man. If pronouncements are made in the judiciary, they become enforceable. There are processes of enforcing decisions of court. And therefore, if, if, if NLC has got and gotten a judgment, the government is bound to obey. And if the government refuses to obey, there are machineries for enforcement of judgment that can be exploited. So it's no excuse for you to say that the, the, the judiciary is strong and is vibrant. I am a legal practitioner. I practice law. And I know that the judiciary in Kaduna said is vibrant. I know judgment at the first government. I know judgment at the first for government. And so, so I cannot tell you that the judiciary is not vibrant. Kaduna said is very, very vibrant. Secondly, you cannot tell me that the Kaduna State government does not dialogue. Just yesterday, the TUC dialogued with Kaduna State government. They went there and they dialogued with the head of, head of service. Prior, the head of service prior, is a prior senior to the, the government. Prior to the strike. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Dan Ladi, Mr. Dan Ladi, prior to the events of yet from yes. of yesterday, was there any dialogue? Was there any conversation that was had between the TUC, organized labor, and the Kaduna State government in the build up to yesterday's events? I don't know. I I, I don't know. Yeah, so so I, isn't I it possible know. that the, the reason that there is dialogue that. is because I, I of the protests? Yes. Yeah, oh, no. what I'm asking is, isn't it possible that the reason there's dialogue is um, because of the events of yesterday and the protests already taking place? No, it's, it's certainly not. It's not. It's certainly not. Because I know, I know as a fact that 
Once you go to government, the relevant government agencies, and tell them that, look, I want to discuss this issue, they will discuss. The head of service is the chief person of a civil servant in Kaduna State, and she's the representative of the government. So if you have any problem as regards workers, she's the first point of call. You go and meet her, and you dialogue with her and discuss with her. Whatever you agree with her, she will take it up with the government, and the issues will be resolved. Um. Look, let me tell you, this issue of sack or no sack, whether we like it or not, the sacking of workers, as unfortunate as it is, it is desirable. Desirable in the sense that, seriously, sir, let me tell you, there are a lot of ghost workers in Kaduna State. Whether you like it, that's the truth about it. There are people who are just ripping government without rendering any service to government. That's the truth about it. And so if those people are let off, I don't think there's any problem. I need to feel aggrieved. They should go to court. If you say you have not been paid, Government said we have paid. NLC said have not been paid. So who is telling who is telling lies? And so let us know. Let them come out and say A, B, C, D. Who have been disengaged have not been paid. Okay. And let government now say okay we have paid or we have not paid. All right, Barrister NLC Francis. You, Francis. Say, a, B, C, D. Who have been engaged or so, so, so dead have not paid. Okay, Barrister and Francis. Government, government said we have paid. I am happy let you just know. said Dialogue that. Dialogue will solve this problem. Barrister Dialogue Francis. will solve this problem. Problem. Okay, thanks for your thought, Barista Francis, but could you hold on for a minute? I'm happy you said what you just said, because I was about to ask Mr. Ephraim you know, Juna about uh, the specifics of this case. Well, we've heard Ayuba Waba say 18,000 people were disengaged, 7,000 people were disengaged. I spoke with an NULGE uh, member yesterday. I was having different figures. So the figures here is, is not cohesive. Um, Mr. Ephraim Juna, could you give me you know, you know, a verifiable amount of workers in Kaduna State that have been disengaged from service, according to you, arbitrarily. Well, as at the time uh, we are going, the letters were still flowing uh, of disengaging staff, and uh, you know, from the call termination, from the call uh, retirement, from the call dismissal, all those kind of funny, funny. Uh, uh, languages on the letter. And uh, as at the last count, the no gay, no gay was about 2,000 of no gay staff were disengaged. He went to these uh, uh, medical, uh, these uh, medical health workers. They disengaged about 4,000. Then they went to NUT. NUT was also disengaged about uh, 700, uh, 750. So in all this last episode we are talking about, he has disengaged about 7,500 uh, workers. Is there a possibility because Barrister Francis so for somebody has, has to tell me that, that, that Air of Fire will listen. Yeah. Okay, let, me, let me cite an instance with the head of service that he mentioned. Be look at before the, you look go at on, situation. before you go on, Ephraim Jonah, kindly hold on. Before you go on, I will let you finish. Uh, but I want you to add, you know, the possibilities of ghost workers in these numbers that you've just mentioned. Uh, Barrister Francis had mentioned that there's a lot of ghost workers in Kaduna State that also need to be taken out of the, you know, the uh, wage bill. So do you think that there is a possibility that that is also part of, part of the numbers that you've just mentioned as you go on? I don't know where he got his information. I don't know where he is getting his information. There are ghost workers. Does he have evidences that there are ghost workers in Kaduna uh, in civil service? If he doesn't, if he does, if he does, if he does have it, well, I don't have it. So yeah, he's in a better position to tell us how we came about the ghost of guys talking about. But as far as we know, these are human beings that can be counted. You will count them the number and they are physical, they are visible, that things that we, they are not invisible. So for him to say that there are ghost workers in Kaduna, why would he not partner with labor? We have done work for several governors in the a, 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 in Kaduna here. We have we have we have collaborated with governors in Kaduna here. We collaborated with Muakarvi, we collaborated with uh, Ahamid, our uh, Ahamid the military governor, we collaborated with them and we brought out issues that help the government. If there are, if there are things like that, why not engage labor? All right. Okay. On and the 25% is deducted from workers the other term. I want to cite one instance okay. so that you will know what I'm talking about. He, he, he directed that 25% of salary should be cut from the staff salary without, without consultation. And uh, when, when, when he discovered that labor was uh, talking, uh, the head of service down called. I say, eh, eh, what can you do? You see, our situation is like this. And after we agree that, let it be, let it be like two or five percent, so that the people can still go home with something. Can still go home with something. As I'm, as I'm telling you now, 
at that meeting, the, my, the, the head of service said that it has already been determined. It, uh, it is something that has been decided by the council. So I, there was nothing we could do just to say, so this, you are giving us information. You are giving us information. So that has been the character and the policies and the operation of the governor in Kaduna State. Okay. So, so because Mr. I don't Jonah, know whether the barrister is, in, is living in Kaduna or not. Okay. I don't know. But if he's in Kaduna, he should, he should, he should, test, he should attest to the fact that this governor has no listening ears. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have listening ears. And uh, people have talked to him, but we can see how stubborn he is. And uh, we, are, we, are, we, are not, we are not doing it to, to hurt anybody. Okay. What we are doing is the legal thing we are doing. If, so, we, if we protest, the protest is allowed by law, we, we have the right to protest. Okay, so Mr. Jonah, and, I, I just wanted to get... to the governor. Yes, many, he, many, many, many weeks ago. Yes, you did mention that, Mr. Jonah. Um, I, I want to ask you, you're striking now for the next five days to warn the government, right? So what do you want the government to do to make the workers, you know, leave the streets and go back to work? What would be... You know the solution to that. All we need is that let everyone return to status quo. The people that have been sent in court, they should be called back. And all the people, can you imagine that somebody who level one to six, what he did was that he casualized them. Somebody who has been working for 20 years, 25 years, he casualized them, that he doesn't have a degree, a cleaner in the hospital, or a, a person that is a, a, he works in the hospital that has, he doesn't know any, he doesn't have to know anything. I don't need to go to school to learn how to sweep. I don't need to go to school to know how to wash, a, a, you know, the, the, the best spread. I don't need that. So for him to have casualized staff from level one to six, is that fair? And I'm telling you, Erufai has, in the local government now, he has revised the minimum wage of 30,000 to 18,000. That was what they were paid last month. Oh, that was the money they were paid last month. And I can't imagine that somebody will not trust. This is a, this is a document that was signed into law. Minimum wage deal is a, is a, is a constitutional provision that, look, this is, the, this, is, this is the benchmark of what they are going to pay people. All right. but, we and uh, he came up to say, if you're up to 50 years, go. And that was, I, I was not asking him, is he not more than 50 years? Is he not a civil servant? Why will he not take the, why will he not take the bar and go out? All right, before Why we go back to Barrister Francis, to hold on, uh, Ephraim Jonah. The painful thing is that he doesn't follow the rule of law. Yeah, well, before we go back to Barrister Francis, um, Barrister Francis, I would like you to uh, speak on um, the response of the Cardinal State Government and if that also, you know, it, it may not be, you know, a good enough response, you know, <laughs> considering the fact that Ephraim Jonah says that he's not a listening governor, in his response, he said that the strike is uh, sabotage and it is uh, meant to sabotage the economy and the movement of uh, Kaduna State and also has uh, politicized it a little bit. Uh, but before that, Ephraim Jonah, do you have the support of the Kaduna State workers? At your protest yesterday, did you have hundreds or maybe even thousands of workers out in the streets in solidarity with your, with your cause? Well, um, you see, when we say we don't have support, I don't understand. I'm, I'm asking the people that um, you saw there yesterday. The level of support workers. you have. They were they are workers in the state. They are workers in the state, and I don't know where he he's saying that uh, people didn't turn up. People were in their offices. I don't know where I got those, those information. But let me quickly tell, say say this: that because of the intimidation and threats, some people couldn't even come out. Because they know the kind of person we are dealing with. You, they, because, in fact, at a point, we were suspecting maybe they were going to organize a, you know, a talk to come and interrupt the, 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 our protest. But thank God, uh, I don't know whether the God led in his heart not to try that. Because if you had tried that, it would have been another story by, we will be All talking right. about today. Okay. Now, let's go back to Barrister Francis now. Um, yeah. The question that I asked... The re response of the Kaduna State government, uh, Kaduna State governor, he has uh, described this as a sabotage, you know, and, um, you know, there's also political intonations to it. Um, how do you respond? To, uh, what, what does that say to you? And does that show him as a listening governor? Thank, thank you very much, sir. Uh, first of all, let me make it clear that NLC has no definite figure about who whose appointment have been terminated or not. I challenge them to be specific 
after a number of uh, uh, civil servants that have been... I'm saying that because they have just exaggerated the figure out of context. Secondly, the fact that there are ghost workers in Kodonasi cannot... is, is a fact known to every person in Kodonasi. There are schools that don't exist that just are purported to stay there and pay salaries. He knows about that. So those are ghost workers that they don't exist in Kodonasi. We know that. And Erufai and the government tried to put them out and they are making noise because most of the beneficiaries of those ghost workers are those that are making the noise play. The, 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 the leaders of the NLC and other people like that. Second, thirdly, let me tell you, he said people above 50 years have been sacked. It's that, not true. That's a, that's a strong statement. I know as a fact that now, there are sir. people who are above 50 years that are working in the Kodonasi Civil Service. Mr. Mr. Francis, I don't want us, I don't so want us to not quickly true. skip it's over... It's just propaganda. Yeah, I don't want us to quickly I'm just... I promise, just let me go. Kindly hold on. Then, he, you he, you he also, finish, but I, I don't want us let's to skip over the government. a statement that you just made, um, that the NLC leaders are beneficiaries of uh, the ghost workers. In and I'm exaggerating states. the that's figures. A, yeah, that, that, and I'm exaggerating figures. That, that's a strong allegation there, sir. Yeah, and it's true. They are exaggerating the, the figures. They are exaggerating. They don't have any definite figure. I challenge them to produce in specific terms the exact number of workers that have been fact. You've, Let them do that. you've also they said have. that they are benefiting Let from the ghost that. workers. Let them do that. And second... Look, let, let me tell you, a lot of people are benefiting. The ghost, if there's a ghost worker, somebody's benefiting from it. And the NLC president, somebody must like you said, the NLC leadership. And so, and so that is the point. State. Let's go back to the, the, the issue. Pardon? And you, you, you said that the NLC yeah. leadership in Kaduna State are part of the beneficiaries of the ghost workers. Let, let me tell you, sir, the point, the point I'm making is that there are ghost workers. There were ghost workers, and there are still ghost workers today. Somebody somewhere in leadership, either senior government officials, some fake senior government officials, and some leaders, leaders of the union are part of it. They could look. Okay. They're part of it. I benefit from it. Mr. Mr. Jonah. That, that's the truth. Mr. Jonah, and, and, and can you hear me? And we talk about the of the government. Whether you say... The, listen, sir, listen. Let me finish this point. Let me just make this point. Go ahead. So, wait. Let me just make this point. So, now, you, the, the, I make want to say that as I yesterday, I am living in Kaduna. As I yesterday, many civil servants went to work. Those who were on the streets are not civil servants. They're not civil servants. Wow. Many civil servants went to work. It was later on that they were unlocked all the offices and just out of the offices. So people are really interested in working. Because they know that the approach to this problem is not strike, it's not strike, it's not protest. Okay. The approach to this problem, as I said, there are either two ways. You either dialogue and find a solution to it, or you go and challenge. Okay. That's the only way. But we when hear you, you. we hear you, strike, Barrister. Strike is as it's old fashioned. Yes, we hear you, Barrister. Um, Mr. Mr. Ephraim Jana. Mr. Ephraim, can you hear me? Not very really clear. Yes, if you can hear me, we know that back in 2016, there was a verification exercise in Kaduna State that uncovered over 16,000 ghost workers in Kaduna State. And here, Barrister Francis Daladikosa is repeating that there are ghost workers in Kaduna State, that the NLC has no definite figure as to the amount of people who have been allegedly sacked by the government, and that the NLC members are beneficiaries of the ghost worker situation in Kaduna State. Can you kindly respond to that? I think the only area I had is whether we, the NLC are beneficiary to the ghost worker he claimed they are in Kaduna. Yes, go ahead, please. The audio is not okay. The audio is not okay. But, but, but if you can hear me, if you can hear me, uh, you see, I, I want to ask the barrister, who is a learned person to withdraw to withdraw some of the statements he made now because this statement uh, until and unless is able to prove that uh, labor is colluding with those workers in the state and for somebody to come and say that whether somebody is being instigated by external forces it is not true it's not true what is happening in kaduna is so painful it's so it's something that you can touch you can feel so for somebody who, do, uh, at, uh, at my age now, somebody will be pushing me up and down. At the age of Waba, somebody will be pushing me up and down. 
that go and do this, don't do this, go and do this, don't do this. It's very unfortunate the barrister is saying that what he's saying because I, I take exception to what he's saying. Whether we are colluding, colluding with who? Colluding with the ghost workers? One who is a ghost worker? Somebody that you can't see and you call him a ghost, you say you are colluding with ghost workers? What does that mean? So I take exception to that. And until he's able to give a proof, I will not accept that. Okay, well, we have to wrap it up. Um, I don't know if uh, we would have the barrister withdraw that statement or, you know, do you stand by your statement, Barrister Francis? Hello? 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 Yes, go ahead. Uh, would you, are you standing by your Hello? statement, Barrister Francis uh, Danladi? Well, I stand by my statement that there are ghost workers, there were ghost workers, and the ghost workers were among those who were chased out. Uh, of, of, and there still exist some ghost workers. And I stand by my statement that some people somewhere are benefiting from those because the salaries that are being paid to people's pockets and, and so on and so forth. I stand by my statement. I don't have any, any do you, do withdrawal. You, That's I, the truth we're about referring it. To, and he's talking we're about referring someone. To, yeah, we're referring to your statement. You call, you, you, you call, you call uh, Labour. Mr. Francis, we're referring Labour? to your statement. Are Labour not part of the Kandasi civil servants? Yes, we're referring to your statement in Daisy. We're referring to your statement. Can you hold on? Can you hold on? Mr. Francis, would you hold on? Yes. I don't know working in Kandasi government. So are you saying that they are? Are you standing by your statement that they are beneficiaries? In the civil service. Are you saying that they are beneficiaries of the ghost workers in Kaduna State? That's the question. Are you standing by that statement that the NOC? My position has been clear. My position has been clear. I don't do anything. I'm saying I I made the point very clear, pointedly that look, there are ghost workers and that there are people who are benefiting from the salaries of these purported ghost workers, and that people who are in leadership in government, yeah, they are they, 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 the leadership of NLC or whoever in Kaduna State are part of the civil service of Kaduna State. I don't know the civil servants. All right, that, I don't that's, pick that's, from that's somewhere. What, what I don't know the positions of authority in Kaduna State. They work, they're workers. Yeah, that's what we're So they benefit, some benefits from them. Barrister Francis, thank you very and much. And because, because people have been sacked, they have lost this, this illegal means of, 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 of means. They are making noise all over the place. The all right, thank you very much. Barrister Francis, I made that point clear. Dan Ladi, that look, uh, they don't have any specific exact number. Thank you very much, Barrister Francis, Dan Ladi, Koza, um, for your time this morning. And also, um, Ephraim Jonah, Deputy Chairman, NLC Kaduna State. Thank you very much for speaking with us yes, on this thank uh, you very both. issue. Yeah, we hope to, uh, to follow up with you both you know, regarding... Pleasure. The, you know, the outcome of this whole strike. What happens after five days? If the government doesn't budge, does the NLC move as well? We'll be following all the you know, developments here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. So we'll take a break here and return to discuss another burning issue in Nigeria, and that's uh, electricity and our power deficit.